This is your ultimate insider guide to all things Medicare. Hello, this is Ed Weir, retired district manager of the Social Security Administration. I retired, now I'm helping people throughout the country with all things Social Security, Medicare, also the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare. And I've taken hundreds of thousands of applications throughout my uh, career, um, including uh, retirement, uh, disability, of course, Medicare. So today, this is going to be your ultimate guide. So sit back, grab a cup of coffee. This is going to be a long one. This is the, uh, the only guide perhaps you'll ever need. If there are any updates or changes after I upload this to YouTube, I will attach those to the end of the video. Now, although this is going to be perhaps my longest video I've ever done, could be a lot longer, um, but I'm going to try to keep it... Uh, um, within manageable limits. So uh, this is kind of like uh, going to your local seminar and, and learning about Medicare, but without all the high pressure um, sales tactics. Uh, and I, unfortunately, I don't provide free food or coffee and uh, what you're at your house. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll make do. All right, so what are we gonna talk about today? We are going to talk about uh, what is Medicare, the different parts of Medicare, Part A, Part B, Part C, Part D, the supplements, what they cover, what each of those cover, um, why you should sign up for Medicare, how to sign up for Medicare, when to sign up for Medicare, after you've signed up for Medicare, what happens then, what are some of the tips, tricks, and secrets that uh, I've learned helping hundreds of thousands of people throughout the country with their Medicare, um, what to watch out for. Um, I've got a few missions for you as well, several jobs to uh, educate people and uh, also to make sure Social Security is doing the right thing. Noticed uh, some things they miss, so we're going to talk about that today and uh, you're going to be uh, fully educated. So next time you go in the Social Security office, uh, you will be able to tell them some of the things they miss so they can do some uh, internal training and get that done. So the different parts of Medicare. So you have part A, which covers your hospitals. Part B covers your doctors. Part C, those are uh, run by private insurance companies, also called Medicare Advantage plans. And then you've got part D, which is the prescription drug plans. And those are also, um, you get those through private insurance company. So part A and part B, you go down to your local social security office and we're gonna walk through the entire process of how to apply for A and B and everything like that. Part C and part D, you sign up through a private insurance company, okay? And then there's also Medicare supplement plans which cover the, the, the gaps, uh, part of the gaps that um, Medicare, the original Medicare part A and part B doesn't cover. So we'll get all, all those, but let's, uh, and, and I'm going to break down A, B, C, and D uh, a little bit more and what they, uh, what they cover, what they don't cover. Uh, but first, uh, let's see whether um, you should apply. If you already know you're going to be 65 years old and everything, and you, uh, but even then there's some caveats. Uh, that's one of the things of uh, Social Security, um, Medicare, uh, the government. Um, uh, again, I was the district manager of the third busiest Social Security office in the country. We saw thousands of people every day. Um, before that, I was a specialist with the Department of Welfare. Um, in my younger years, I was a sergeant in the Marine Corps, so I've spent, uh, uh, for, for good or for bad, uh, a long time with the federal government, a long time with government bureaucracy, so I kind of know how they work and how to navigate them. Okay, so... Um, there's always exceptions to the exceptions to the exceptions. So anytime, uh, um, you know, in, anytime you see a rule or regulation um, and you start reading, okay, that applies to me, uh, there's usually a little asterisk um, where you have to look in the footnotes in the bottom where it says, unless this or the exception to that. That's why it's always important to talk to somebody um, who is familiar with the particular program you're talking about, you're interested in. And that's one of the things that we do. Again, we help people throughout the country. If you want to watch the entire two hours of video, then stick around. It's going to be a, a nice little interesting ride. But uh, if you know you already need to sign up, 
and you just want to get it done and go on with your life, um, give us a call and uh, uh, we can you know, give you the, the abbreviated version and help you sign up for A, B, tell you all the gaps, and then we can also sign you up for Part C, Part D, a Medicare supplement plan, whatever you need. Uh, we, we, uh, just give us a call and we can help you out. Okay, who should sign up? So if you're 65 years old, you're approaching 65 years old, um, if you're already receiving Social Security monthly benefits, then you really don't have to do anything. What happens is about three months before you turn 65, Medicare will send you your packet in the mail. So don't throw it away um, because when you turn 65, every Medicare insurance agent and agency in the country is, I'm sure you know, inundating you with junk mail and phone calls and all the rest of it. So uh, yeah, it, when you turn 65, it's uh, you know, like being, you know, the, back in high school or everybody wants to take you to the dance, I guess. Um, everybody wants to take you to the 65 year old dance. So, but you will receive something officially from Medicare. And so be very careful um, because sometimes some of this mail looks official, but official, but it's not official. You know, it's, you know, you, you are eligible for this and you're eligible for this state program and make sure you contact and so all look very, very official, but it's not. Once you get 65, again, three months before you turn 65, you're going to get the packet in the mail from Medicare. It's going to have your Medicare number in there, your Medicare card with your Medicare number. And in the old days, and not a, not so old, but a few years ago, they used to put uh, uh, social security numbers on your Medicare number. Social security did, Medicare did. And then at the same time, um, Social Security said, don't carry your Social Security card around with you because if you carry it in your wallet, purse, you've got your Social Security card in there and you've also got your driver's license. So now if you lose it, somebody has your Social Security number and your date of birth. Um, but you needed your Medicare number to go to the doctor in case you need to go to the doctor. So you included you, you had it in there and that's got your Social Security number. So that made no sense whatsoever. So they finally got smart uh, and uh, uh, came up with a weird set of numbers and letters, uh, a unique identifier um, that uh, you will use as your Medicare number. And on your card, as, as you can see in the example here, it has Medicare Part A, and then it says start date, Medicare B, start date. So that's what you will get in the mail and, and make sure it's it looks like this. Again, there are some companies out there that send, you know, strange things that look very, very official, but they're not. But so your card actually has to look like this one here. And if that's what you want, if you want to start Medicare Part A and Part B when you're 65, keep it, you're good. Um, put that in your wallet or your purse in case you ever know, need to go to the doctor and you're all set. But be very, be very, very careful. Um, another uh, scam out there, something to be careful of is your Medicare number, treat it kind of like your social security number. Um, unfortunately, you know, there's some bad actors out there and what we see happening is they will call you up and they'll say, you know, they'll entice you with, you know, we can get you, you know, $3,000 and all this, you know, great bunch of free money for groceries and utilities and stuff like that. Uh, let me see if you're qualified. Give me your, Medicare number and your date of birth and your name. And that's all they need. That's all they need to switch your plan, cause trouble, whatever the case may be. And if, you know, again, if you choose one of these private plans and you have your doctors and then next time you go to your doctor, they send you the bill and they say, what do you send me the bill? I, well, we're not covered with your insurance. So you might be out several thousand dollars or more. Um, so be very, very careful. When should you return it? Well, you should return it when you don't want Medicare Part B predominantly. Again, Part A is free. But here's one thing that Social Security employees uh, miss because they know Social Security, they know Medicare, but they don't know private insurance companies. So if you have a an HSA, a health savings account, 
and you're paying into that health savings account, if you have part A, that stops. You can't put any more money into a health savings account. You can take money out, but you can't put money back in. So some Social Security employees, and again, this is one of the things uh, we need to go out there and perhaps educate. And I know there's a lot of Social Security employees watching this uh, channel. So please go back to your offices and educate um, your coworkers on the fact that that is if the person has an HSA, then you know, we have to make sure we tell them, have current insurance through work, then you don't have to sign up for Part B. But again, this is another exception that Social Security employees throughout the country miss. That current insurance through work, the work has to, the your employer has to have 20 employees or more, or be part of, part of a, a multi, multiple employer group plan. But if, again, complicated, just ask your, you know, your boss, okay, are we part of a multiple, you know, group plan? But if your company has below 20 employees and, but you have health insurance, Social Security employees don't, again, they don't know the, the insurance part of it, and, but you do, and you're going to go out there and educate them. That's one of your missions, right? Because what happens is a Social Security employee will say that, oh, yeah, if, if you have health insurance and you're happy with it, you don't have to sign it for, you know, Part A, Part B. You know, you can do A, but, you know, you don't have to do B and save yourself $164, and that's true. Unless it's a small company with under 20 employees, because what happens is your the insurance, your private insurance group health insurance company will stop paying those bills because they expect you to get Medicare. So it's the whole thing of first payer, second payer and stuff. Um, so it gets kind of complicated. So you know, reach out to us, uh, reach out to your, your HR. Um, unfortunately, uh, Social Security, the employees are not educated, are not trained about that part of it. They're not trained uh, about uh, uh, workplaces under 20 employees and HSA. So please be careful about that. And coworkers go out there and, you know, get trained on that. If you don't already receive Social Security benefits, and your card doesn't come automatically, what do you do now? Or if you have, if you're on social security disability, same type of situation. If you're on uh, social security disability after 24 months, the card will come out automatically and everything. So, so if you're not going to get your card automatically because you're on social security benefits, what do you do? Well, a few months before you turn 65, you file for Medicare. Okay. And say, for instance, uh, um, you're going to continue to work, um, but uh, you don't like your health insurance from work or you don't have health insurance from work or anything. If, if you don't have health insurance, if you're in your early 60s or anywhere under 65, um, there's, off, off, there's obviously the, uh, the Affordable Care Act, also called Obamacare. Um, so if you're a long ways away from 65 and Medicare, there are alternatives and uh, there's subsidies and cost sharing. So give us a call and uh, we can uh, figure out uh, how much a health insurance plan in your particular area is and how much you're going to pay for it. And we'll make sure uh, we get you all of the cost savings and subsidies and uh, reductions we possibly can. Okay, so give us a call and we'll help you out with that. Um, but if you're reaching 65, um, then you need to file. How do you do that? three options. You can go down to the Social Security office and uh, just walk in. But uh, this is my particular office. Again, I ran the third busiest office in the country. The top picture is the morning line. It was like that every single day. And you can see it keeps going around. Um, there's still people on the right side of that picture that it's still winded around the parking lot. And the bottom picture is my lobby on a, on a pretty much daily basis. It's all different now because of uh, COVID, but uh, that's how it was. Uh, and it's basically like that throughout the country, uh, over 1200 offices throughout the country. And, uh, but uh, uh, with baby boomers and everything, it's just, uh, yeah, it's not a good idea to just walk in. Um, but uh, if you so choose, go for it. Also, you can, call the 800 number and schedule an appointment. So you call them up and say, you can do a, an in-office appointment. So 
you just go on whatever day they tell you, you know, and at a particular time and you've got an appointment and you don't necessarily have to wait in line or anything. You just, you know, you you're just go there at your appointment date and time. Or you can set up an appointment for a phone call. So basically at that particular, you know, March 7th, you know, um, at two o'clock, somebody on March 7th at two o'clock will call you. Um, pretty good about that. Our office is pretty, usually pretty good about calling you almost right on, right at two o'clock or a little bit earlier. So, so we always did relatively good on that one. Um, or you can file online. And, and one thing I, we, one thing social security always recommends is always, um, set up a social security account online. Um, and that way you can get your, you know, your earnings record, um, and you want to make sure your earnings record is correct. So if you haven't registered for an account online, it's kind of difficult to do. Um, Social Security makes it a little difficult to do. Um, that way, if somebody doesn't go in there and, you know, makes an account for you and, you know, starts changing your direct deposit or something like that, causing trouble for you. So it's a, you have to go through all kinds of, you know, test questions, I guess, uh, um, in order to set up an account. But once you get it all set up, um, print off your earnings record, check Make sure your earnings record is correct because that obviously influences your, uh, um, your, your monthly benefit amount and whether you can get Medicare. If everything is all messed up, then, you know, it'll be a, a pretty good issue. All right. So you set up an account and you can go online and file for Medicare. Again, if, uh, if you already have health insurance from work and you're happy with it. So about three months before, that's plenty. That's about as soon as you can um, uh, apply, um, what kind of documentation do you need? Again, if you're already receiving social security monthly benefits, you've already provided your birth certificate and everything like that. Um, proving your age, if that is actually needed. Um, a few years ago, the social security administration changed the regulations that if your social security card has, is, is correct. And you're just like, well, your social security, I just have your social security number, but internally, in internal records, it's called a, a numident, giving out a lot of insider information here. Um, on your, what we call the numident, um, it has your social security number, it has your date of birth, it has the city and state where you're born, it has your parents' uh, name, your mother's name, maiden name. That's why sometimes when you call social security, they ask you, you know, what was your you know, mother's maiden name and, you know, what city were you born and stuff like that to ID you. All that is on your social security card. Again, your social security card just has your number on there, but internally it has a lot more. So if everything in there is correct, your date of birth, uh, you're a U.S. citizen. So if, again, if you, uh, so if you become naturalized, um, make sure you update your social security card. If you have an appointment, they will tell you at the time of the appointment, whether you need a birth certificate or, you know, marriage certificate or divorce decree or anything like that, if you're filing for Medicare off of your spouse record because you didn't work, um, you can get Medicare from a spouse's record. Um, so that's an important thing that the, a lot of people don't realize. And also independently entitled and divorced spouse, IEDS, um, that's a, a program, a claim type that a lot of people don't know about. I did a video on that, so please check that out. Uh, uh, independently entitled divorce spouse, kind of a secret benefit a lot of people don't know about. So make sure you check that one out. And so you could, if you didn't work, you could conceivably get Medicare from a previous spouse. All right. And uh, so you apply for the Medicare, your Medicare card should come. It usually doesn't take that long uh, within a month. Um, the the premium, the Part B premium, if you're currently receiving Social Security benefits, it'll be just be taken directly out of your Social Security check. OK, if you're not receiving Social Security benefits and you sign up for Part B, again, Part A is free, um, then your Part B premium will be billed to you. So it's every three months so you can also do kind of an election to get it uh, automatically taken out. But uh, um, so you need to make some type of arrangements to get that done. So it's important that you pay that bill because if you don't, then Social Security will send you, you know, a letter or two. And again, so much junk mail, people miss it and they don't pay the premium and then they stop the Part B 
and it's far more difficult to start it back up because you're, you're not you're no longer 65 so you have to wait for a general enrollment period which is from january 1st until march 31st and you may have to if it's over 12 months you may have to pay a penalty which is basically if you don't sign up for part b when you're supposed to which is at 65 and you wait 12 months and sign up for it then then you have to pay a temperature a, you have to pay a 10% penalty for every 12 month period you did not enroll in part B. And that's for the rest of your life. So forever, you have to pay that 10, 20, 30% penalty. And again, it's more difficult. It's very limited to when you can uh, to enroll. So it's important that you sign up when you're supposed to. Um, however, again, you don't have to sign up. You don't have to sign up for part B if you currently have health insurance through work, your work, or your spouse's work, either one. And again, you know, 20 employees or more, um, and uh, you're happy with it. And again, you need to make those kind of calculations. Um, there's a lot of people that call me and says, well, you know, I, I, I do, but, you know, it's kind of expensive. So those are kind of the, you know, the, the cost benefit analysis you need to make. Um, if your, you know, your, your current employer, your spouse's employer gives you, you know, health insurance, but it's crazy expensive and you compare that to Medicare part B with the, you know, the premium, and then we'll talk about what, you know, part A and part B doesn't cover. So there's also considerations in there, whether you should get it or keep on your, your health insurance. One of the things that, uh, um, there's a law changed a few years ago, a lot of people don't know about. Uh, it's called ICRA. Um, there's always acronyms in the in the government. It's basically as, and this is an, another mission um, to educate. I, I want I want you to watch this video not only for you but your family, friends, neighbors, you know, people you know, um, people that you look out for. Um, so this is not only information for you, but I'd like to get uh, this information out to as many people as possible. That's one of the reasons why uh, um, everybody always said subscribe and press the like button and the, the bell and all that kind of YouTube stuff. Uh, why is that? Um, because the more comments and likes and subscribes and all subscriptions and all that kind of good stuff, I'm all I'm kind of new to YouTube. Um, never thought I'd be doing YouTube in a million years, but here I am. But all of that I guess YouTube has an algorithm and the more comments and likes and all that kind of good stuff, it sends out this particular video to more people. So you could possibly help a lot more people by, you know, subscribing and liking and commenting and all that kind of good stuff. So please, if, if you don't mind, that'd be great. Um, Want to get it out there to the most people the, as possible. Okay. So um, group health insurance from employers those premiums are going up every single year. If, uh, if you, you know, you have your own company, you've got some employees, you, you can attest, um, comment below premiums for group health insurance are going up and up and up 20, 30% every year. So a few years ago, there was a federal law passed again, ICRA individual coverage, health reimbursement arrangement. And this ICRA law basically is an alternative to group health insurance. And it, just, you know, if you've got an employer, if you're an employee yourself, if you're working for a company or you just leaving a company and, and you know for sure, and, and you know by experience that these, you know, the, the group health rates have just been going up and up and up, um, do everybody in, you know, your, your, your company, uh, wherever you worked a favor and, uh, you know, have the HR person or the, uh, the owner of the company reach out to me and I'll walk them through the entire process and explain this new law and how they can use it to save money for the employees on the premiums and get them more choices based on this new law that was just passed. Um, and group, um, my personal opinion, pretty much the opinion of almost everybody out there, these group health insurance rates, uh, rates are going to continue to go up because more people, are going to be moving to this new option, um, and insurance is a is a pooled risk. The the more people you have in the pool, you know, paying premiums and everything like that, 
it's cheaper for everybody. So, you know, if you have, you know, two sick people in the pool, then, you know, premiums are going to be outrageous. If you have two sick people and, you know, a thousand healthy people, then it's, it's a pooled risk. So you know, group health insurance premiums are going to continue to go up, but there is an option and uh, make sure uh, you give us a call and uh, we can walk you through. It's kind of a, just as any bureaucratic thing, it's uh, kind of complicated, but uh, we can uh, walk you through it and take care of everything for you. All right. So if you don't need Part B because you have a, a health insurance through work and you're happy with it and your employer's over 20 employees, yada, 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 everything I just mentioned, um, then you don't need to sign up for Part B. Save yourself $164. You will not be penalized. Okay. If you don't sign up and you don't have health insurance through work, through current work for you or your spouse, then you will be penalized. But if you do have health insurance through current work and there's more than 20 employees, then you won't be penalized. What you have to do is say, for instance, you work another five years. So you stop working when you're 70 years old and about three months before you turn 70 years old, you download these two forms, the 40B and the 564, these two forms here, and you fill them out and you take one of them to your employer and employers, um, you know, fill these out probably on a daily basis. And it's basically certification proof that you did in fact have health insurance through work since you were 65. So if you had, if you had, you know, if you worked at two different companies, you worked at uh, one company when you're 65 and then you return, you know, when you turn 67, you went to another company. So you'll need two of these forms taken down to each one of your employers because it, uh, social security needs something to show that you had health insurance consistently since from 65 to let's say again, 70. Um, and as long as you prove that and you fill out this, uh, the one to actually enroll, and the, the important part is in that big bottom remarks section on the bottom. Um, please write in there, um, please start part B and then the month. So month, year, please start, write that down yourself. It doesn't include that, but uh, it makes everything easier. Make sure you put your you know, address and you know, date of birth and everything like that. And you hand that to the, the, uh, the employee at the Social Security Administration, you go down there and hand it to them. Uh, or you can mail it in, um, or you can actually, it's a lot more efficient to actually to fax it in. Yeah, there's faxes out there. So, um, uh, so you can actually fax it in. If you got someone with fax, it's always good to, uh, you know, confirmation receipt and, you know, fax prints out a little confirmation receipt. Anytime you do anything with social security administration, it's always good to make a note to get a copy, a stamped copy. They actually received it on anything. Um, if you call up Social Security about something, you know, Medicare, Social Security, uh, Medicare, disability, retirement, or something like that, make a note um, that, you know, you talk to Social Security on this particular day, and you talk to this particular person, and this particular person said X, Y, and Z, and that way you've got a note of it. Uh, that way, if there's an issue later, you can say, well, I was given, you know, this information, whether it was correct or incorrect. Now we've got some of the documentation to kind of protect yourself. So please do that. Um, Again, if you fax it in, um, Social Security has this new paperless system, which I just happen to have been on the national team that designed the Social Security paperless system that they currently use. So if you if you mail something in, what they do is they take the, your your uh, your your documents and they put it into this paperless system. All Social Security offices should be using that system. Okay, it's perfect for tracking. It's a good system, so use it. Um, but if uh, if anybody wants to fax some something, in, it immediately goes to that particular system for tracking, and so it's less chance of uh, losing it. If you know if you mail it, it, could get lost. But if you fax it in to the paperless system, it's called WorkTrack, um, by the way, it's more insider information that you probably didn't want to know. Um, it automatic automatically go to that system, and it's uh, it's it, a lot more trackable. Okay, all right. Um, so that's to avoid the part B penalty. All right. Uh, we're, we're knee deep into it. Uh, need a coffee break. Got my coffee cup here. Oh, Volkswagen. 
hippie coffee cup hippie without the uh the hair depending on the day i can either go my hippie one or my marine corps one or my don't mess with texas either one i guess i'm not sure what I'm going for today but anyway um the part b premium if you can't afford if you want to cancel your part B because you can't afford the part B premium, please, please, please reach out. Um, we don't want you to cancel part B if you don't really have to. And give us a chance to see if we can save you some money with some of the other programs out there, uh, state, federal, other programs. Um, I've got a, a few videos on that. Uh, um, on saving money, financial help. So definitely check those out. But in terms of canceling part B, um, because you need the money now, um, there is a program, federal state program called the Medicare savings program. And it's basically, uh, it's, uh, administered through uh, pretty much the welfare departments in each particular state. And it depends on your income and resources, but you just might be able to get help to pay for that monthly premium from your state welfare office, Medicaid office. So apply, give us a call and we can walk you through the whole process. But uh, if you already know where the, uh, the welfare office is, go down there and say, hey, um, I need help. Um, I need help paying uh, for my Part B premium and they can sign you up um and uh, take an application and see if you're qualified and for everybody else that's watching again this video is not just for you this is uh you know part of uh you know we're we're all in this together right so this is a uh, this is a team effort so if you know somebody that's struggling a senior that's struggling someone on disability that's struggling you know that you know 100 plus dollars 150 dollars plus that's uh, that's a big thing so if you know somebody like that, um, you know, walk them down to the, uh, the welfare office, take them down to the welfare office, give us a call and we can walk you through the process. Again, I worked for the Department of Welfare before I worked Social Security Administration. So I've taken many, many food stamp applications and Medicaid applications. And uh, so we can uh, walk you through the process and hopefully uh, the state will pay for your Part B premium and also get you Medicaid. You can get you people can have Medicaid and Medicare at the same time. Um, oh, and one more thing um, about this Medicare savings program and the state's paying for your Part B premium. Only about half the people, last estimates I've seen, only about half of the people in the United States who are eligible for help to pay their Part B premium are getting it. That means the other half of the people out there who should be getting that help, who need that help, aren't receiving that. So that is uh, that's a, another mission. Uh, we need to go out there and find those people and get them the help they need. Again, uh, that you know, hundred hundred fifty dollars plus, it will make a big difference. And there's different levels of uh, Medicaid. If uh, you go down there and apply. And it depends on the federal poverty level, the income, your income and resources. If uh, you are uh, qualified, they give you different levels in each state because it's a, it's a federal state program. So each state is a little bit different. They have different levels. Sometimes they would just pay your Part B. Um, it, other levels, they will pay your Part B plus. They will pay your co-insurance or co-payments and, and all the rest of it. So apply. As I always say, with all these programs, apply. If they say no, then, you know, at least you try. But if they say no and you uh, you think they're wrong, because guess what? <laughs> um, state government, uh, federal government uh, employees make mistakes. Go figure. Um, if you think they're wrong, appeal the decision. So usually when you get the denial letter, with anything, it'll have, uh, you know, if you disagree with the decision, you have 60 or 90 days to appeal the decision. Make sure you get it in and appeal the decision before the time frame is expires. If there's um, extenuating circumstances, you got sick or something like that, and, and it says um, you have to do it within 60 days, 
um, but you got sick or you're out of town, you didn't get the mail or something like that, most agencies will, again, what I say, there's exceptions to exceptions. And I used to get appeals all the time and, you know, it was supposed to be 60 or 90 days and it came in, you know, a week or two weeks, three weeks later. And the person called up and they say, well, it's, it's extenuating circumstance, this, 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 and this. And if it's a, a believable, you know, scenario, then we just approved the, the delay in the appeal. So um, appeal. And if you want to, you know, help on that, make sure you give us a call. But again, please go out there and uh, let's, uh, if you know uh, anybody struggling, let's go out there and uh, do the right thing and uh, try to get as many people as uh, the help they need. A statistic uh, to kind of uh, bring this home, they said uh, a million more seniors fell into poverty in 2022. So that's 10.3% uh, of all seniors, according to the last estimates. And that's one of the things, uh, uh, you know, Social Security come around in 1935, Medicare started in the 1960s, but Social Security has been, you know, one of the most successful poverty alleviating programs in American history. Um, so it's done, uh, um, you know, a world for seniors, but we need to, you know, it's due diligence. Um, you know, the, the price of freedom is you know, eternal vigilance, I guess, right? So we need to, uh, it, you know, it, it can get, get better, social get, get better, social security can get better, Medicare can be, get better. How does it get better? Well, we you know, come together and uh, we demand it another better. program out there. Just so many programs. Um, it's called the low income subsidy, extra help with your prescription drugs, Medicare prescription drugs. And that you apply through the Social Security Administration. So you can uh, apply at any time. Um, you can do it when, uh, you know, you actually uh, uh, sign up for Medicare to begin with. But if you didn't, you don't remember whether you signed up. It's one of the easiest uh, Social Security applications there are. Uh, I've taken, you know, thousands, thousands, tens of thousands of them. Um, so it's basically help with your prescription drugs. So you have to be signed up for, a, you know, obviously a, a Medicare Part D as in dog uh, prescription drug plan. But then this uh, extra help with the prescription drug kicks in and helps you, again, low income subsidy. So you have to have low income and resources. Um, and one of the things, one of the recent developments on this is the recently signed Inflation Reduction Act changes the thresholds for the program. So in 2024, all the thresholds are going to change so you can make uh, more money. Um, again, it's, you know, federal poverty level uh, numbers. And uh, they estimate that another four or five million people will be eligible for this low income subsidy with your prescription drugs. So if you filed for that before um, in 2023 or before, try again in 2024 when the new numbers come out because you just might be eligible. And there's estimates that uh, uh, people that receive this extra help save uh, around $5,300 every year in prescription drugs. So again, if an, that doesn't apply to you, think, is there anybody that needs that help from, you know, the prescription drugs, anybody that, you know, struggling, let's, let's reach out to these people, give me a call and uh, we can walk you through the whole process. Call the 800 number. It's, again, it's one of the, the, the easiest applications to do. Uh, call Social Security. You can, do it on the phone or they'll send you the, uh, the short little application, fill it out. And even if you don't need prescription drugs now, even if say, well, I don't pay that much. I don't have that many prescription drugs and they're, they're all generic. So there's like $5, no big deal. That's now. What happens next week, next month, next year, when your doctor gives you something expensive, it's better to have that extra help on your record, just sitting there. You don't use it. Don't use it the next six months. Hopefully that'd be great. Awesome. But six months from now, when you get a new prescription, hopefully you don't, but if you do, that extra help is just sitting there waiting for you. So when you go down to the pharmacy to fill it out, you don't have to pay $400. You might have to pay, you know, $8, whatever the case may be, depending on there's different levels of subsidies of extra help. So even if you don't need it now, apply for it. So it's sitting there waiting for you. Okay. Another insider tip.
What about the other end of the spectrum? The people don't need the uh, the help of the Medicare savings program to pay for the Part B premium, the people that uh, don't need help with the prescription drug, uh, extra help, uh, the people that make a lot of money. Um, you will be charged extra for your Part B premium, hundreds of dollars extra. Um, but this is based on your income from two years prior. So if you're making a lot of money and then you uh, apply for Medicare and they send you your bill for your Medicare Part B and it's, you know, three, four five hundred dollars. Um, but you say, wait a second, I no, no longer ma making that money because basically uh, Social Security determines it's called IRMA income related monthly adjustment amount. So IRMA, again, acronym for everything. So um, it's based on two years prior because don't have, you know, Social Security doesn't have your taxes this year. And um, it, when they come up with the calculation, it's later in the year, so they don't have it for that year. And so that's why it's two years prior. It's kind of a, a weird little accounting time frame issue. Um, so if you've recently had a life changing event, you've gotten, you know, divorced and it was your spouse's income, um, you lost your job, uh, but basically, uh, long story short, if you're no longer receiving that type of income, then you just have to, again, fill out a form and provide it to the social security administration and make the case that uh, you need to adjust my Medicare to the standard rate or reduce it because I'm no longer receiving this type of income. And it's a uh, rather complicated, you know, reach out to us again, and uh, we can walk you through the entire process. It's a, uh, based on your modified adjusted gross income, not necessarily what you pay into the IRS. Uh, Social, Social Security uses a different calculation, a different base to determine uh, your IRMA amount. So uh, um, I'll, I'll have another video on that. It goes in a little bit more detail on IRMA. Okay, so you've applied, you realized you needed it, you applied, uh, usually get to, once you apply, usually get it the next month. It just take a few months uh, you, until you start, but uh, everything has changed recently. It made it a bit easier. You get your card, uh, you're entitled the following month for the most part. Um, once you apply, you get your card in the mail in about three weeks or so. Okay, so you got your card. Awesome. Went through the entire process. Now, what do you got? What's in your card? What is A, B, C, D, all that? Uh, and what does it cover? How much do you pay? Is everything free? Guess what? It ain't. It's not. It ain't. All right. So let's go through all of uh, uh, each part uh, one by one and tell you how much you are on the hook for with original Medicare. Part A premium is zero for most people. If you um, it's zero. Part A premium is zero for most people unless you did not you did not have 40 quarters of coverage. If you didn't work enough or your spouse work enough and pay into uh, um, FICA, your Social Security, Medicare tax enough, then uh, you will have to pay a premium. And again, same type of situation if you're having difficulty paying that premium um, Medicare savings program through Medicaid, your state welfare office, uh, definitely reach out to them. All right. So part A, hospital deductible above and beyond the premium. So the premium is the monthly amount. Uh, for most people, you're going to pay zero for part A. But if you actually use it, again, part A is hospital. If you actually use it for 2023, there is a deductible. And that deductible for 2023 is $1,600 per benefit period. Okay. So it's not per year. It's kind of like a, a car. You know, if you know, you've got your deductible, if you get in an accident, you have a $500 deductible, you have to pay your first $500. If you get into another accident the, the week, a uh, week later, then you haven't met your deductible. This is a whole new accident. So you have to pay another $500. It's kind of like that for Medicare, but it's a little bit different. Um, there's a time frame. It's uh, 60 days. Um, so basically $1,600 per benefit period, and you could have up to six benefit periods per year. So and you could pay six times $1,600 in deductibles for that one year. Okay. So basically a, a benefit period begins when you are admitted to the hospital as an inpatient. So that's important. If you go to the hospital and you stay for two or three days and you're just under observation and they don't technically admit you to the hospital, 
then uh, you, that's not covered under Part A, so that might be an issue. So if you go to the hospital, uh, you know, make sure you're actually admitted and, uh, um, you know, check um, exactly um, what type of status they are keeping you there overnight. Okay. All right. So again, a benefit period begins when you are actually admitted to the hospital as an inpatient and ends when you've received no hospital or skilled nursing care for a full 60 days in a row. And then there's also coinsurance. So for the hospital, so from days one to 60, um, per benefit period, again, $0 per day. If you're in the hospital for 61 to 90 days, it's $400 per day per that benefit period. So again, if you go in the, the hospital for, for let's say 90 days, then you're going to pay the $1,600 deductible. Um, for 60 days is free. And then uh, it's zero cost, not free. You've paid for all this money. Where's all this money come from? It comes from all those decades you paid your FICA taxes. So FICA taxes includes Social Security and Medicare. So none of this stuff is free. You've paid for it. You've paid in advance. And now you're just uh, um, getting what uh, you paid for, you're, you're entitled to. Okay. All right. So um, from day 61 to 90, you're paying $400 per day. Um, after that, you pay 100%. And then there's also a, a lifetime reserve days. Um, Medicare gives you up to 60 lifetime reserve days to use as needed following a 90-day hospital stay. Um, lifetime reserve days are $800 per day. This is, this is getting crazy complicated. But part A, the premium is free, but to actually use it... Uh, entirely different issue, right? So there are gaps there that uh, you, you'll have to consider um, and uh, plan for and continue watching this video and uh, we'll come up with uh, some options that uh, you can choose. Uh, most people don't just stay with part A and part B because there's just too many gaps. Um, they get some type of extra insurance above and beyond. So we'll talk about that here in a bit. Skilled nursing, um, co-insurance, uh, zero to 20 days is zero, 21 to 100, $200. After that, you pay 100%. Um, part B, again, as I mentioned, for 2023, it's $164.90. Again, for high income wage earners, there's a higher premium. There's a deductible for Part B. That's $226 per year. That's it. There is no per benefit period. It's just per year. Very, very easy to understand. Um, so this is the amount you must pay for medical or outpatient services before Part B will begin to pay. Uh, the deductible doesn't apply to certain preventive services. You know, uh, Medicare and most health insurance companies want you to do preventive, you know, um, services. That way, it you know makes you healthier and and uh, um, yeah, and less chance of actually using the insurance. That's pretty much a universal. Okay, and here's the big one. Part B medical coinsurance. Medicare pays 80%. So again, Part B covers your hospitals. Part B essentially covers your doctors. Um, and if you have some type of surgery and the doctor charges you $100,000 for that surgery, guess what? You're going to have to come up with $20,000. So... If you got $20,000 laying around the house, then you're good. But if you don't, then uh, definitely need to think of uh, plan B for part B, right? What does part A cover? It covers inpatient hospital care, skilled nursing care in a skilled nursing facility, home health care, and hospice care services. Part B covers services from doctors and other healthcare providers, mental health care, preventive and screening services, durable medical equipment, outpatient care, and ambulance. That's what uh, Part A, Part B covers, but let's see what original Medicare, Part A and Part B, do not cover. 
So part A and part B does not cover uh, outpatient prescription drugs, uh, routine dental care. They cover some dental care uh, in the hospital if there's an accident or something that like that, but just regular dental care as we, you know, we think of it, they don't cover that. Dentures uh, doesn't cover uh, routine vision exams, eyeglasses, uh, part A and part B doesn't cover hearing exams, hearing aids doesn't uh, prevent, uh, doesn't cover routine preventive physical exams over-the-counter items, gym memberships, transportation. So there's uh, quite a few things that uh, Part A and Part B doesn't cover that you can get other places, but we'll talk about uh, those. About uh, those. And one of the important things on uh, Part A and Part B is that there's no limit on out-of-pocket cost. So your out-of-pocket cost for Part A, Part B, if something happens, you have to have a surgery, you go to the hospital or something like that, your out-of-pocket cost is not limited. So it could be a thousand dollars, could be ten thousand dollars, could be a hundred thousand dollars, could be a million dollars. There's essentially no limit to out of pocket costs if all you have is part A and Part B of Medicare. Your Medicare Part A and your Part B. You got your card in your hand and now you know what they cover and how much they're gonna cost if something happens. And let's talk about options, alternatives. So you can go one of two ways. So there's option one and option two. Option, I guess the original option is just stay with part A and part B. And, uh, you know, if you're good, you've got uh, that, you know, you've got money in the in the bank and you're able to cover the part, you know, B 20% co-insurance in case something happens, then you're good. See you later. Then uh, you can stop the video here. But uh, if you don't have that kind of money sitting around or you would rather get insurance to cover that in case something happens, then let's check out your options. And what is the best one? It's a case by case basis. It really depends on your particular situation. And where do you get these other options? Uh, we're talking plan C, Medicare plan C, which are the Medicare Advantage plans and Medicare supplement plans, also called Medigap plans. Where do you get those? You get those from private insurance companies. So as I mentioned, uh, um, I and my team, we can set you up with these. We're contracted with uh, most of the major carriers throughout the country. So we can look for a particular plan in your area if you choose, if, if you want help from us. But if not, again, if you don't want our help and you just have social security questions, you know, you want to, you know, learn about uh, filing for retirement or survivor benefits or spousal benefits, or you've got a, a child with a disability or something like that, you're thinking about filing or something, you've got an aunt, uncle, mother, whatever, give us a call. That's kind of what we're doing now is we're helping out as many people as we possibly can um, schedule an appointment, just give us a call and uh, we can help you out. Um, but if you want us to help you with your Medicare supplement or your Medicare part C or the Medicare part D, the prescription drug plan, we'd be more than happy to help you out. And l l let me, let me tell you about uh, the, this whole, how this whole thing works. So, You've got these private insurance companies and they kind of work with Medicare, over Medicare, cover around Medicare, whatever the case may be. And you can sign up, uh, you know, directly uh, with the companies directly, or you can use a Medicare insurance agent or a broker. Um, we are brokers, um, which means we don't work for any particular company. Um, we, you know, are contracted with most of them and so it doesn't matter which one you pick, it's, it's all the same to us. But if you're, if there's also captive agents that only work for one particular company. So it's kind of like the old Henry Ford. Um, you know, you can have any, any color, you know, car you want as long as it's black. So if you, you know, if the person, you know, you have helped you sign up for a plan is only works for Acme, you know, just making up this name, Acme Medicare Insurance Company, then that's the plan probably you're going to get, right? Um, but a broker or other agents um, that uh, contract with most, and, and that's one of the things Medicare, CMS, the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, is cracking down recently, which is good, finally, on a lot of this advertising 
misinformation, deceptive ad advertising, bait and switch. There's just a whole bunch of questionable um, things going on out there. Commercials, you know, football stars and captains and all kinds of things. Um, promising all kinds of different benefits and money, call us and we'll give you all this, you know, we'll give you the world and stuff. Medicare is cracking down on those because um, some of these have, you know, it, they're depend on, they depend on the geographic location. Some have, you know, uh, we're talking mostly Medicare Advantage plans here, um, in, in which I'll talk about what the difference is between the two. But I just want to give you kind of the overview of the world of, Medicare insurance here. So it's based on geographic locations. So if you've got, you know, the, there's, you know, for instance, there's one plan in one part of the country, so let's say Wheeling, West Virginia, that is just awesome. And it has so many good benefits. Um, you know, it gives you thousands of dollars on this, that, and the other. Um, what we see happening is commercials and Facebook and, you know, they say, hey, we can get you, you know, thousands of dollars. And it's just this one plan in this one part of the country, but they broadcast it the entire country. And that way people call them and they got you. And they start asking for your Medicare number and they get you hooked in there. And as soon as you're all hooked, they say, oh, I'm sorry, you, that, you can't get that. But, you know, we can sell you this, this other thing. So, uh, um, yeah, Medicare is finally cracking down on that. Actually, Medicare is mandating uh, um, everybody, all these insurance agents, including myself, to record. So if you ever call me, uh, sorry, all calls will be recorded, which is great. I love it. Um, working for Social Security, I've seen uh, too many people, um, you know, come into Social Security and they're, you know, they, they say, I just went down to the, the, you know, just went down to pharmacy and, all of a sudden, you know, my, my prescription is not covered anymore. I went to my doctor's and my doctor's not covered anymore. What happened? I didn't do anything. Well, what happened is you gave your Medicare number out to somebody that called you out of the blue or you called some commercial and you were routed to some call center somewhere and they got your numbers and, you know, they needed a quota, whatever the case may be, and they switched your plans without you knowing about it. So that's one of the reasons Medicare, which is a beautiful thing, they're saying, okay, all right, we're going to stop this. Let's record everybody. Everybody has to record. So if that happens, they're going to go back into the recording. So if you complain and say, it's, you know, hey, somebody switched my plan. I didn't, I didn't know about it. And I talked to somebody about a month ago, but I didn't tell that person to switch my plan. Then you complain to Medicare, CMS, Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services. You complain to Medicare and hopefully they will investigate and ask that agent or broker, or whoever, let's listen to that recording. And they'll listen to that recording and say, well, this person never said to change your plan. So hopefully that all of that, uh, those Terrible practices, um, shady practices will slowly but surely and we'll get, the, you know, the bad players out of the games slowly but surely. So it's a beautiful thing. So I'm glad Medicare is uh, um, finally taking action like this. Okay. All right. So let's, let's, um, oh, and uh, um, a, a, another thing, uh, I guess I stick on the, on the world of, uh, um, uh, you know, the insurance agents and all the rest of them. Again, I'm an insurance agent. Uh, um, when I retired from the Social Security Administration uh, not very long ago, um, you know, people started asking me questions about Social Security and Medicare and stuff like that. So I would answer the questions and then, you know, ballooned into their friends and friends and friends and friends and friends and relatives. And, and it became kind of a full time job, it seems like. And then I did this crazy YouTube thing and kind of blew up. So it got kind of out of control really, really quick, but it's awesome. Love doing it. Um, but uh, um, people said, okay, you're, you know, you're helping with part A and part B. What about C and D and, you know, all this other kind of stuff. So, and then I saw all of the uh, kind of the shady practices and all the, that's customer service. Um, you know, 
it, you, you sign somebody up and and you just send them a big birthday card once a year. That's that's the only service you provide. You know, I think I can do better than that. So I decided to get into this whole insurance thing. So that's what I did. And uh, please don't call me insurance. Anyway, reputable profession, but uh, uh, the bad actors, you know, kind of ruined it for everybody. Um, so I state licensed states across the country, um, got contracted with uh, the major players, the major carriers. And yes, so I can help you with, uh, you know, not only getting, you know, social security, spousal benefits, survivor benefits, death benefits, disability, um, uh, Medicare part A, part B, but uh, we can also help with uh, part C and part D if you want us to help you out. And how much uh, people always ask you, what are you doing this for free? Are you, are you doing this for free? Um, they're always wanting to send me money through Patreon and stuff like that. No, I, no, insurance agents get paid directly from the insurance companies. So they, they're contracted with the insurance companies. Let's say again, fictitious company, Acme Medicare company. And when you sign up with Medicare, uh, Acme Medicare company through that agent or broker, then the insurance company pays them directly every year you're enrolled in that plan okay and it's the the amount is dictated by the government cms so every year the cms says okay you will pay you know agents this amount so everybody gets paid exactly the same right so um so if you sign up with me then same exact situation but uh, i don't do the whole birthday card, you're not going to get a birthday email from me, probably. Um, I think we provide more service and we help you with Social Security. And most others can't because I would rather they not, because there's a company out there that uh, I'm not going to say educational institution, that uh, they have like a two day online class seminar on all things Social Security. And uh, then they give you a cute little certificate says you're a social security expert and go out there and, you know, rule the world. I've seen too many mistakes. I've seen too many people lose money and benefits because they've listened to people that shouldn't been giving that advice. Social security regulations, everything are over 20,000 pages. There are exceptions to the exceptions to the exceptions. So please be very, very careful getting advice on something that, you know, is going to affect you for the rest of your life, your monthly social security benefits and your Medicare and everything. So be very, very careful um, getting advice from people, make sure they're actually qualified to give advice. So that's one of the things uh, when uh, I got into doing the whole Medicare insurance thing, I said, okay, you know, uh, birthday card, that's it, huh? I said, well, we can do a little better. So um, I guess it's kind of a bit of an appeal. Um, what I would, what I'm kind of leaning towards, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm trying to do, what I'm trying to do is there's a, an amazing amount of people out there, and, and I knew that working for Social Security for decades, that are completely confused about Social Security and Medicare. It's way too complicated. And to go down the Social Security Administration, you saw the line of, you know, people in my particular office and you call up and you can't get through. And they don't, you know, they can answer questions about Part A and Part B, but they can't help with Part C and Part D and all the rest of it. And they can't coordinate that with, with you know, Medicaid and the Medicare Savings Program. So they have kind of tunnel vision Social Security and Medicaid has tunnel vision Medicaid and so uh, um, being in both worlds, um, figured I'd provide a better service. I, I thought never, in, I thought nobody would be watching me on YouTube, but it's kind of exploded. My, my terribly produced videos. Um, this is you're gonna. This is all I'm gonna get. I'm gonna white wall. That's it. I'm gonna white wall it. I'm no fancy studio here. Um, it's all about the, uh, the actual content and the information I provide, but what I, I, I want to bring on more retired social security 
employees that have decades and decades of experience so we can help out more people. I eventually want to bring on someone that retired from the Veterans Administration to help out our veterans. Again, I was a sergeant in the Marine Corps, so I've got a soft spot for veterans. Um, they need a lot of help out there. Um, I'm not a veterans benefit expert, even though I was in the military. I never really uh, did too much with veteran benefits. So I want to bring on an expert there with veteran benefits. Um, so I'm looking for support to help us bring on more people. So if you choose to let us help you choose a Medicare Part C plan, a Medicare supplement plan, a prescription drug plan, um, relatives, whoever um, need the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, all of that helps us bring on more people so we can answer more calls and help more people navigate the system. So I would like, uh, again, I can help 10 or 20 people out a day, um, you know, navigating the system, answering their, you know, their questions, returning emails, you know, 20, 30. But uh, um, w the demand is considerable. So there's a, there's a lot of people I just can't get back to. So I, I want to bring on more people. The more people that choose us to get enrolled, the more uh, retired employees, uh, the more retired experts we can get to help people throughout the country navigate uh, Social Security, Medicaid, uh, Medicare, and all the rest of it. So um, again, if you currently have a Medicare supplement plan or a Medicare Advantage plan or a prescription drug plan, you are paying someone. You are not paying them directly, but the insurance company is paying them every year while you're enrolled in those plans. So, you know, um, how, how much service have they provided? And, you know, I've, there's many agents out there that, you know, they work during the annual enrollment period, you know, October 15th to December 7th. And then they just take off the rest of the year and, you know, you know, go buy a boat and go skiing or go hunting and stuff. Um, if you decide again, if, if you don't, if you've got a brother, you know, a sister, that's an insurance agent. And so you got to keep them understand, um, still call us up. If you have any social security questions, Medicare questions, Medicaid questions, you know, all the rest of it doesn't matter. Um, but if you can, if you want to, we really appreciate it if you chose us to help you. So basically you give us a call and say, hey, you know, we like to see if uh, there's a better plan out there because these uh, the, these plans that we're going to talk about, what what they are, the Medicare Advantage and everything, um, those change every year. Um, so every year you can change and not like a car policy where you keep it forever and ever and ever. Um, the plans change, the benefits change, uh, your cost savings, your costs change every year. So it's good to change. It's good to shop around for a different plan every year. So this year, we'd really appreciate it if you contacted us and gave us a chance to see if we can find something better. If we can't find anything better, then it's a beautiful thing again, but do not hesitate to call us for help. Um, even if, uh, you know, again, your brother is an insurance agent and so you, you know, he sold you the insurance, you know, the Medicare insurance, then stay with him. But if you have social security questions, call us. Okay. There's, there's my spiel on that. Okay. Let's get back into the, the different options. All right. So option one are Medicare supplement plans. So those again, are called the Medigap plans and they work like traditional insurance. Um, there's a premium to those anywhere. It depends on uh, your area and uh, uh, smoker and all the rest of it. But uh, um, the uh, uh, premiums anywhere from average 100, 125, 135 dollars um, per month. I have a prescription drug plan. So if you do a Medicare supplement plan, you will have um, uh, you know Medicare Part A and Part B. You have to keep those. You still have to keep those with a Medicare supplement plan or a Medicare Advantage plan. You have to keep part A and part B. Okay. So 
again, you have to pay your Part B premium, you pay the Medicare supplement premium, and then if you want prescription drugs, you'll have to get a, a standalone prescription drug plan. And if you want dental or vision, then you get different you know, plans there as well. Why people choose that one, why people like that one is because there's no HMOs or PPOs or anything like that. You're basically HMO is America. So any, you know, any doctor that takes Medicare takes your Medicare supplement plan. So again, these are, you, you, you find an agent or you contact the company you like directly or whatever the case may be. And it's, they're all the same. Um, they're standardized. There's plan A, there's 10 plans, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Nowadays, most people are going with a plan G. Um, but it really, again, it really depends on the situation. So if anybody tells you that I've got the best plan for you. Um, you know, it's without knowing you, with, you know, it's, it's difficult. You have to, you know, find out what the person needs and stuff. Um, so that is a Medicare supplement plan. Option two are Medicare Advantage plans. Again, Medicare Part C. And again, those are through private companies and those are not standardized. They are determined based on your zip code. Um, so different plans in your particular county or area or region. But the important thing with that is uh, most of them, the, they, are, they are HMOs or PPOs. And HM, the difference between HMO and a PPO is HMO is a, a smaller circle. So HMO, you have to stay in network. Um, if you go out of network, then you're not going to be covered and you have to pay everything yourself. So an, it, if you get an HMO Medicare Advantage plan, you have to stay within the in-network doctors and you need referrals. Some of them are actually, uh, there's some plans you don't need referrals for particular things nowadays. Um, but those are, there's a few of those. Uh, a PPO is just basically an HMO with a larger network. If you use the HMO, um, it's usually cheaper for, you know, co-pays and, you know, all that, if you go to the PPO, because it's a longer, a larger network, you'll pay more than if you went to an HMO doctor. Okay. And there's a lot of uh, zero premium plans out there. Um, they're low cost. Um, you know, Medicare supplement plans are usually, you know, 90, hundred, $120 and, you know, go up. Um, the Medicare Advantage plans, there's a a lot of zero premium plans out there and a lot of them are also wrapped with prescription drug plans so you get a part c plan and there are ones with just medical but uh, a lot of them have part d prescription drug coverage inside of the part c plan inside the medicare advantage so you get a medicare advantage plus part d plan those are zero premiums um, and they have a max out of pocket um, and you know, how you do that is, you know, you, uh, the most important thing, if you're going to be shopping for a Medicare Advantage plan, the most important thing is your doctors and your prescriptions, because again, there's network and you want to make sure that you save as much money as you possibly can. So uh, again, at HMO, um, you know, as I, when I was federal employee at HMO, when I, I guess when I was in the Marine Corps, it was also kind of an HMO, it's called sick bay. Um, but anyway, so uh, if you're going to be shopping for a Medicare Advantage plan to cover all of the gaps and, you know, part A and part D or part A and part B, the original Medicare, um, there's, you know, dozens and dozens of plans probably in your area. And the first thing you do is you, you, know, you find out which one covers the doctors you want to go to. And then you find out which ones have the cheapest prescription drugs. And then once, you know, those two hurdles, I guess, are jumped, then you look for all the extra benefits. You know, does it have, you know, over the counter? Does it have, you know, um, you know, extra benefits, gym membership? Uh, some of them have transportation back and forth to doctors. And so you look for all the extra uh, goodies. And again, where does all this money come from? Uh, the Medicare Advantage companies, uh, the private companies, they get money directly from Medicare per, you know, enrollee. And where does that money come from? That money comes from 
you for the last several decades when you worked and paid into Medicare. So this is essentially, I tell um, people that, uh, you know, you, you're, you're retired, but you're not really retired. You have a new job and your new job is to make sure you get back what you paid into the system, right? Um, so these are your benefits. These are, you know, what you worked for and earned. So let's make sure you're in the best plan possible. And again, those Medicare Advantage plans, every September you will get, it's called an ANOC, annual, annual notice of change. And it'll tell you all the changes in your particular plan for the next year. So you look in there and you say, oh no, my doctor's not covered anymore. Oh no, my prescription's not covered anymore. Or, oh yes, I get extra benefits. Oh, I don't have to pay a, you know, a copay when I go see the doctor anymore. So uh, they go you know, up and down. So um, it's always good to shop, you know, because when you go in your doctor's office, you know, it's, uh, what's the most important to you, your doctor or the card you hand them, right? So whether it's a purple card or a green card or a pink card, you know, they're going to put it in the, in the computer and, you know, that's between them and the insurance company. So what you want to do is make sure, you know, you're saving as much money as you possibly can and getting any extra benefits if they're out there. Um, there, there are different kinds of Medicare Advantage plans. You have ones for chronic. Uh, um, so if you have diabetes or heart conditions or lung conditions, there are special plans for that. Uh, investigate that if uh, um, you have those issues. If you have those issues, um, there are special plans, usually the, uh, the ones with, uh, um, that you see advertised on TV with uh, all the extra benefits, you know, pay for groceries and, um, uh, you know, utilities and all. Those are called the dual plans. And those are for people with Medicare and Medicaid. So remember I mentioned you can have Medicare and Medicaid. So you can have Medicare, Medicaid, and a Medicare Advantage dual plan and then those are the ones that are usually more generous, again, depending on your particular area of the country and all the rest of it. Um, so technically, you could have, um, it gives you an idea of how confusing the entire health insurance system is in the United States. You could have Medicare Part A and Part B and Part C, can Medicare Advantage plan, and the Part C includes a Part D plan, and you could have Medicaid, and you could have that Medicare savings program in there as well, paying your $164 premium, your Part B premium, and your insurance and your co-insurance and co-payments and all the rest. Um, and you could also have that low-income subsidy, the extra help with prescription drugs, all in there together. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's nice and complicated. Have you got the, have you got your coffee? Um, so. Um, if you if you want to you know go it alone and see if you can you know navigate all of that system, uh, but if you need help navigating all of these different components and make sure they work together and you're getting everything you're entitled to uh, and and all the help you need, then uh, you know uh, you know reach out to someone that uh, kind of knows the system and uh, if you want to reach out to us, uh, be more than happy to talk to you. So we talked about part A, part B, when you can roll. We talked about part C, um, uh, part D. Uh, many, well, we didn't talk about part D too much. And again, that's the uh, the standalone prescription drug plan. Um, there's some changes that uh, come about with the Inflation Reduction Act. So there's uh, some changes that uh, um, happening with with that, uh, the whole donut hole, and you've probably heard of the donut hole. So that is kind of going away. I'll, I'll make another video on prescription drug plans, because that's kind of a beast in and of itself. But uh, if you're looking for a prescription drug plan, just reach out to us um, and we can explain your particular situation. Again, um, how do you look for a prescription drug plan? Again, if they're for private companies and you plug in all your prescriptions you're taking and you just compare all the companies in your area and we can do that for you and get you all signed up. So no problem whatsoever. One of the most complicated parts of all this, uh, well, they're all pretty much complicated, but there's another complicated part. Um, that is uh, enrollment periods. Big enrollment period is the annual enrollment period from October 15th to December 7th. So that's, uh, um, you know, 
give us a call if you're interested before that time and we'll, you know, put you down on a list and then we'll, you know, contact you. And uh, when the, the new plans come out for, for the following year, um, usually around October 1st, the brand new plans come out for the following year. Again, we're talking Medicare Advantage plans here. The new plans come out and uh, that's when you kind of shopping around, um, see if there's anything better out there. Medicare supplement plans, um, uh, again, those are all uniform. They're all exactly the same um, in terms of, you know, if you got plan G, it doesn't matter whether you're this company or that company or the other company, it doesn't matter. Plan G is plan G is plan G. Um, the only difference is how much you're going to pay for it. So uh, with the Medicare supplement plans, you give us a call or you call an agent or broker, whoever, and say, uh, hey, is any cheaper companies out there? Maybe I can switch or so. So um, definitely check out those options, um, making sure you're saving as much money as you possibly can. Other than the annual enrollment period, there are special enrollment periods, uh, and it gets just unbelievably complicated. There's a, a kind of an open enrollment period from January 1st to March 31st. And the, the special enrollment periods are, again, if you're, you know, 65 is, you know, pretty much do everything when you're 65 years old. That's the kind of the golden year, I guess. Um, but again, if you, um, you know, you delay, if you delay signing up for Part B because you have uh, insurance through work and then you're 67 years old, that starts a special en enrollment period. Um, so you can sign up for, you know, Part B at that time, you know, with a eight months of, you know, um, losing coverage. Um, and you can sign up for a Medicare supplement plan and a, you know, Medicare Advantage plan at that time. Um, and there's also kind of disaster, you know, you've got a fire someplace or a flood or, you know, there's just the, the government comes out with so many special enrollment periods. It's hard to keep track of them. It just, it'd be amazed how many come out and, uh, on a regular basis. So if you want to know whether you can change your plan or get a plan or whatever the case may be, it's best to just, you know, contact, uh, you know, uh, you know, look at the Medicare.gov website or contact, uh, you know, insurance agent or contact us. Um, and we can uh, walk you through the process. If you're on, uh, if you're on Medicare and Medicaid, you're one of those dual, you can change once every three months. If you're receiving a low income subsidy, that extra help from social security, then you can change your plan every three months and see if you can find a plan, you know, better plan update. Uh, one thing about that, again, the Medicare Advantage plans is, uh, um, and some people hate Medicare Advantage plans. They, they only want Medicare supplement plans. And that's, you know, that's fine. But um, most of the people that uh, call us and I know kind of my audience, um, they are kind of struggling, you know, and if they could afford a Medicare supplement plan, maybe they would get one. Um, so there is no one size fits all. So it just so happens, you know, the people that, you know, reach out to us, you know, really can't afford the extra, you know, $135, $150 for a, a Medicare supplement plan, plus above and beyond that, you know, you know, $30, $40 for a prescription drug plan and above and beyond that a dental, you know. So if you just hate Medicare Advantage plans, then, you know, more power to you. But some people just can't afford those. So that's why I, I you know, talk about Medicare Advantage plans uh, as a wraparound to original Medicare. It's just, that's kind of the people that, uh, you know, reach out to us. Um, it, it doesn't matter, you know, what you sign up for Medicare supplement, Medicare Advantage plan, prescription drug plan, doesn't matter. Um, you know, again, if you need social security help, call us, you know, all the other stuff, doesn't matter, you know, but we can help you with the Medicare supplement, the, the Medicare Advantage and prescription drug plans and uh, the Affordable Care Act. There, I've talked to a lot of people and they say, oh, I love, I love my company that I'm with, Acme Medicare Insurance Company. I love them. Perfect. Awesome. But what they don't understand is Acme Medicare Insurance Company, again, fictitious name, um, hopefully, um, you know, they might have, you know, three or four or five, six plans in your area, eight plans in your area. And you might have Acme Medicare Insurance Plus, and you've had that for, you know, one or two or three or four years and you love it and everything is cool. Your doctors are there, your prescriptions are there. Awesome. But 
last year they came out with Acme Medicare Insurance Plus Plus Plus, and still got your doctors, still got your prescriptions, but now it's lower copay and more benefits, more dental and stuff like that. So all you're doing is upgrading to the newer plan and you'll have the same pretty card you have. It'll just have one more plus, I guess, I guess an example. So it's good to check every year. Um, again, this is not like car insurance where you just keep the same thing forever and ever and ever. It's good to shop around every year and uh, make sure you save as much money as you possible. Because again, where's all the money come from? It came from all those years you paid into FICA taxes, right? So ultimate guy said it was going to be ultimate guide. So actually uh, we can go on for a few more hours, but uh, um, one final thing um, before we finish today, I begin to look out for people in your community, people that are struggling, relatives, friends, you know, make sure they get all the benefits they're eligible for. Um, you know, got that job, please go out there and, and, and get that done. Um, do your best. Um, again, make sure the social security employees doing their job. Um, if they're not, tell somebody. Um, notify, you know, talk to their supervisor, whatever the case may be. I'm sure there's a bunch of stuff I haven't talked about, and I, I know there's a bunch of stuff I haven't talked about. But again, if you have any questions, uh, if you want help looking for, again, Medicare Advantage plan, Medicare supplement plan, prescription drug plan, uh, the Affordable Care Act, uh, our help is, you know, again, you pay us, but it's money that you paid into the Medicare system long ago. And it goes to Medicare and then it goes to Medicare insurance companies and then it goes to whatever agent. So um, and if you choose for us to help you, then uh, I think we can bring on more people. And uh, yeah, so if you've got any questions, um, we'll we'll cut it off here. Um, please comment down, down below. And if I get a lot of comments on a particular um, issue, I will add kind of an extra video at the end where I answer all those other questions. You know, again, I didn't talk about a whole bunch of stuff about Irma. I didn't talk about veterans and the VA and TRICARE and all that. That's a whole different several hour presentation that, uh, but I have a video of Medicare for Marines, even though it says Medicare for Marines, it's all services, but Medicare for Marines just sounds cool. And I was a Marine, so that's kind of why I put the title of it up there. But uh, yeah, please check that out. Um, the other video, if you're currently receiving social security benefits is, um, to make sure your, your monthly benefits is correct. I'll put that at the end as well. That's, I think one of the most popular videos. Um, so I think I, I think I took enough of your time. Um, I appreciate it. Uh, reach out to us if you have any questions and, uh, have a beautiful day.